This viral skincare duo ruined my skin for about a week. This is the Pretty Viral Medicube Collagen Jelly Cream, and I saw all the pictures and videos of people using this, and their skin was just bouncy and dewy and luminous. And I was like, I want that. I want my skin to look like that. So I bought it, obviously, and used it, and immediately after use, my skin looked incredible. It was glowy. Not only did it look good, but it felt good. My skin felt well hydrated. However, two hours later, this is what my skin looked like. I'm no scientist. I'm not 100% sure what happened here, and do not quote me on this. But one of the unique selling points of this product is that it contains freeze-dried hydrolyzed collagen, which basically means that collagen has been broken down smaller so it can penetrate the skin better and quicker and deeper. I think my skin has a problem with ultra low molecular weight ingredients. Hyaluronic acid, now collagen, seems to irritate my rosacea and that's all I can think of. Yes, this has some fragrance in, but my skin has never and still doesn't react to fragrance. It could be this unique mixture of fragrance that was bothering my rosacea. But if any of my science friends can help me explain this or let me know if that's even an option, I, I would love to know what you think because I have no idea. Double cleansing could be breaking you out if you aren't emulsifying. So I'm going to emulsify one side and just wipe on the other and show you the difference. And that's emulsifying your cleansing balm or cleansing oil. So what is emulsifying? Well, in the double cleansing process, you are supposed to gently massage your cleansing balm or cleansing oil over your face until all your makeup and all sunscreen has kind of like melted away. And then you add warm water water and turn it into this milky texture. And then once all the oil has turned into a milk, you rinse it away. And this emulsifying stage is important because it ensures that all your sunscreen, all your makeup, and the cleansing balm or oil itself is rinsed thoroughly off your skin. You can just take like a damp cloth and wipe it away. But my personal issue with wiping everything away is that you probably haven't thoroughly cleansed everything off your skin because emulsifying allows for everything to just rinse off the skin. So if you do just wipe away, but you find yourself breaking out, especially in areas around the eyebrows, the hairline, the beard, in like the little crevicey areas, or just breaking out in general, then start emulsifying your cleansing balms and your cleansing oils. And this could be the answer to why you're potentially still breaking out. This is the cotton pad where I didn't emulsify. It's still got some makeup on it. This is the cotton pad where I did emulsify and it's perfectly clear. So massage, emulsify, and then rinse away. If you are struggling to remove blackheads and sebaceous filaments, give this a go. This is the Sung Boon Editor's Blackhead Melting Clear Pad. These pads contain what they call a sebum melting complex, which sounds like bullshit, but when left on your nose for 10 to 15 minutes, it somehow brings all that gunk to the surface of your nose. Once it's removed, you can use a cotton bud or a little spatula like this to very gently swipe across your nose and remove all that gunk. No pressure applied at all, just glide and look at all that gunk. At first I was like, this is shit, it's done nothing, but the next morning my pores were way more refined. I have pretty big trust issues with TikTok reviews. So I had to buy this mask for myself because her skin looked incredible after. So it looks like it's a peel off mask by a brand called Matri. Matri again? Comes in like a hand cream tube. Oh, okay, I didn't expect it to be like that. I thought it'd be like clear. It's quite fragrance, which I don't mind. It feels oddly moisturizing. It just says to wait until it's hardened. So I guess that's like 10, 15 minutes. We'll see, I'll be back. Right, so it's actually starting to lift here. So I'm guessing that means it's ready. Ooh, it's coming off with no problem at all. Ooh. Is that just sliminess though? It's not, it's not sticky. I thought it would just be like a serum -y type texture left on my skin, but it's not. This is it with that TikTok light on though. So let's turn that off. That's still a really good glowy sheen. I like that a lot. This peel off mask went pretty viral because of that dewy glass skin glow it instantly leaves on your skin. But it's impossible to get your hands on. It's sold out all the time. They don't deliver to the UK. But the MediPill Collagen Wrapping Mask is supposedly supposed to do the exact same thing with the same core ingredient of collagen. But is it gonna leave that same dewy, healthy looking glow? Let's see, let's try. What I love about the Matri 
Grain Magic Gen one was that it was extremely moisturizing. It felt like I was just putting on a moisturizer and not a peel off mask. And so far, ooh, this feels exactly the same. The dry down time of the Matri Gen mask was honestly about 30 minutes. It took so long. I forgot to say in the video, but it took too long. So I'm hoping this dries quicker. This is barely fragrance, if at all, which I know a lot of people didn't like the sound of with the Matcha Gen, <laughs> can't say it, with the other peel off mask. But honestly, the glow that it left was kind of worth it, to be honest with you. Both products claim to have a lifting and pore tightening effect when used consistently. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll be comparing the two at a later date, but let's let this dry off and see how it looks after. Okay, so let's start peeling off from this way. It's a lot tighter than the other mask, but does come off again just as easily without ripping the skin like the old fashioned peel off masks. Ooh, that has done just as good a job. Actually, I would say better. It's again not greasy or slimy. Why is my nose look so shiny? <laughs> It looks so shiny. That has actually done a really, really good job. Here are some more interesting skincare products that I own. Mamonde's Blue Azaline Cloud Toner is a multi-award winning bubble toner with super soothing azaline and 90.6% blue chamomile flower extract to calm the skin. This also has an instant cooling effect without being minty. This is Shiseido's Patting Sponge, which is supposed to help essences better penetrate the skin, leaving you looking plump and dewy. It's fun, but not sure it does a lot to be honest with you. VT's Riedel Shot 100 is constantly sold out, it's so popular. This serum contains these slightly sharp Riedels made from hydrolyzed sea sponge and immersed in a Sika complex that mimics the effect of microneedling, allowing ingredients to better penetrate the skin. It doesn't hurt, but it's not comfortable. It feels like a super strong physical exfoliant. This is Alternative Stereo's Steaming Milk Lip Potion. Think of this as a toner for your lips that's hydrating, moisturizing, and helps soften dead flaky skin off the lips. This is Future Society's Optimal Habit, a fragrance primer that claims to extend the wear of your fragrance for up to 24 hours. And honestly, in my experience, this works. That's some good news and kind of bad news about this viral, again, clay mask. First things first, no, it doesn't detox your skin. Whatever that means, you cannot detox through your skin. Detox in the cosmetics world is an unregulated term. And this also leads to misinformation surrounding how this mask works. The next claim is that it pulls impurities and oils out of your skin. That's pretty much true. Again, impurities is one of those words open to interpretation, but I'm guessing here they mean excess oil, sebaceous filament, excess gunk, you know. The key ingredients doing this are bentonite and kaolin clay, but it's not unique to this product or this price point. People are seeing all these very clear pores on their nose once this mask dries down. And I don't really know why people are shocked by this, to be honest, or what they think they're seeing. This is just something that happens very commonly when you use a clay mask. This here, for example, is a L'Oreal mask. This one is an Innisfree mask. And this one is bentonite clay mixed with water. And all this shows, I'm sorry to say, is where your pores are just a little bit bigger, so naturally where that excess serum is going to sit. And I believe this is why it first went viral, because people kind of misunderstood what they were seeing. I think they thought this was the sign of the mask detoxing. Really, this is just a very common effect of bentonite and cowling clay. Can this minimize pores? Kind of, yes. All clay masks make this claim because they clear out all that gunk, leading to the appearance of smaller pores. And then obviously the more you clear out your pores, the smaller appearing your pores are going to be. Is this suitable for all skin types? I'm going to say no, especially those with rosacea, easy sensitized skin, and acne. Cordially love to say their products are fragrance-free when they're actually not. What they mean is synthetic fragrance-free, which isn't better than natural fragrance-free. However, this product is packed with essential oils, in particular bergamot, which is an essential oil that is a known irritant, among many others. That all being said, it is a nice clay mask. It dries down really nicely. It doesn't over dry your skin. The grape that Cordely uses is a nice antioxidant touch. For the price point, I think it's decent. You get an elegantly formulated clay mask with a lot of luxury fluff kind of thrown in. And I do think there are better clay masks out there that do the same job without all the potentially irritating ingredients.
really been enjoying them. These are BioHills version of those Dermasense collagen patches that are almost like a serum in like a patch form, but they're less fiddly, a tiny bit cheaper as well. So in this box, you get the tightening serum, which you apply under your eyes. Just very lightly packed in to begin with. Don't rub it all in. Now, the collagen patches are done in a way that makes them so much less fiddle fiddlier. So I'm trying not to touch the collagen, but the white bit here is where the collagen is. And then you apply them pink side up. So I'll show you how you do them properly. Just do this, pat them on, pull the pink side away and all the collagen is now under your eyes. Now I'll remove this pink bit so you can see what's happening. You lay the collagen on top of the serum on this bit of netting, then you can see it all just dissolving away. Make sure it's all in there, and you peel away. Whenever I post a video about collagen, I always get asked, oh, I thought collagen didn't do anything. It does do something. It's a very nice moisturizer, which makes it perfect for under the eyes, but it doesn't do anything for anti-aging like brands would like us to believe. I don't think they're a waste of money. I just think they're an expense that you don't really need to pay. Just get yourself a collagen eye cream. But if you can afford it, they're fun. They do a really nice job. My under eyes feel very tight and moisturized all the time. Do not rinse off your micellar waters. It's happening again. People are spreading the information that you must be rinsing off your micellar waters. Otherwise they're gonna break you out, they're gonna irritate your skin. The truth is there are some shit micellar waters and there are some amazing micellar waters. Micellar waters 99.9% .9 of the time are made to stay on your skin. They are made for convenience. They are made for you to have a cleanse that is tap water free. But some are just better than others. Some may irritate your skin, some may not irritate your skin. For example, Garnier, I will not touch that shit. Irritates my skin to no end. My brother loves it. It's one of his favorite micellar waters. Bioderma, perfect for me. Made to stay on the skin with people with sensitive skin in mind. If a micellar water starts breaking you out, it's not because micellar waters need to be washed off. It's because it irritates your skin and it's breaking you out. That's it. It doesn't mean stop using micellar waters. It means try a new one if you want to. If you are rinsing off your micellar waters, you may as well just be doing a normal cleanse. It defeats the whole purpose of a micellar water. Leave micellar water on your skin. If it's breaking you out, it's not because all micellar water is bad. It's because it's not for you. I can't believe I'm actually doing this skincare hack, but I think it's actually working, you know? So following a super basic evening skincare routine, I'm going to apply a generous layer of nappy rash cream or pseudo cream. Dr. Shreen Idris calls this face basting and it utilizes a zinc oxide based cream to help heal the skin as well as reducing inflammation and can potentially help with breakouts and rosacea. Now I'm cringing because experts have always told me never to use pseudo cream on the skin after it got popular as a spot treatment. When I went to bed, I was looking like a greasy mess but I woke up surprisingly kind of dry but the tiny breakouts on my head had been reduced my skin felt calmer so I think I will be doing this more often I recently started face basting using pseudo cream and the results were pretty good. However, it stinks, it smells. So I swapped it with this Aveeno Baby Alternative. It's pretty much the same ingredients with that healing zinc oxide. That is the whole point in the face basting. It's a little bit harder to spread, but pretty much does the exact same thing and feels the exact same way. I have started to avoid the eye area because sometimes it can be a little bit drying on those thinner areas of skin, but really it does the exact same thing. Great results. So I'll be using the Vino Baby version from now on. I've had so many comments about the way I pronounce this brand. And there's a few reasons why I pronounce it this way. Number one, this word, you will never fucking get me to say. It is the most disgusting word. It will never leave my mouth. You know the way some people hate the word moist? This is my moist. Don't say it in front of me. Don't say it around me. Don't try and make me say it. But secondly, and more importantly, people actually pronounce this as pseudo cream in a few different places for a few different reasons. It's mainly down to the history of the product. When it was invented, in 1931, it was originally called Soothing Cream, but the Dublin accent, which is where it was actually created, kind of changed that over the years. And because of the accent, it kind of became known as Soothing Cream. So in the 1950s, the brand actually officially changed the name to Pseudo. But this said people was kind of merging the two names together because growing up, we all knew people who were alive before the 1950s, if you're my age, who still call this product Soothing Cream. So in the UK, and especially in Ireland, I believe, you'll still hear people calling it Pseudo Cream. Yes, it's technically wrong, but there is a reason people say it. But if this upset you, you should definitely check out the way people around the world pronounce Nutella. <laughs> 
some good things and some bad things to say about Rare Beauty's hopeful first step towards a full skincare line. So here are my pros and cons of Rare Beauty's Find Comfort Body Collection. The first pro is that the hydrating body lotion has some actual really nice ingredients in. I love that brands are now seeing the benefits of the actives we put on our face and have started to put it in body care. Con, the packaging is really nice. It's like this soft touch, but the bottles are a little bit too hard to squeeze. I did that and loads of air has just come out. So it's one of those things we have to like do that and then do that. Pro, the fragrance of all the products is really nice. Nice is the word because comforting and nice feelings is a perfect way to describe the scent of this. Jasmine, lemon zest and cashmere wood. It's deep without being too musky and floral without being too light and summery. Con, the fragrance doesn't linger for that long in my experience. You put it on, it lasts a good hour and then it's gone, but that might be a pro for some people, which I get actually. On that note, the next pro is that the body and hair fragrance mist is the perfect amount of of scent for your body. It's not overpowering. It's not gonna overpower any fragrance that you wear, like fragrance fragrance. It feels almost natural. Like you could trick people into being like, oh yeah, that's just how I smell when I wake up. And I feel that's because it settles on your hair and body really nicely. If you're like me and you like to wear fragrance when you're just lounging around the house or before you go to bed. This is a perfect mist that's not going to be overpowering for your senses. Con, the hand cream lid is annoying and the packaging is annoying. I really like it, but with, with both of these, it's going to get to a point where you can't get the product out of the bottom. Yeah, you could screw off the lid and get some more out, but it's going to be a real job. So not only is it hard to squeeze, but the lid is so long. It's so long. So not only do you have to squeeze to try and get enough product out, then have to click this lid and then try and get product through a tube down here as well. An unexpected pro is the Stop and Soothe Aromatherapy Pen. Listen, I'm not big into aromatherapy. I love fragrance in my skincare. I don't care for aromatherapy though. I also in particular don't like the smell of lavender, but I was actually really surprised that I'm using this product more than any of the others. And I actually really like this. It has got lavender in and peppermint, I believe. But again, it's soothing and relaxing. I'm not one of those people who like to spray lavender shit all over my pillow to help me sleep. But it's in this like gel cream consistency that you just pump from the bottom like that. And, like a tiny amount comes out. Can you see that? But you can then just rub on your neck. And because it's in this gel cream, it just rubs in and doesn't linger around like an oil, like an aromatherapy oil or lavender oil. It doesn't go over your bedding. It just stays on your skin and you can smell it. And it's really comforting and soothing, I'll be honest. I don't hate this range. I'm actually really enjoying using it. And as I said, I hope this is the initial step into more skincare from Rare Beauty. Skincare products I'm convinced people are pretending they like. That quarterly vitamin C clay mask is kind of more so just irks me because it is a very basic clay mask, but TikTok being TikTok, people are making false claims about this product, saying that it was drawing blackheads and oils out of the skin, which clay does not do. Clay can absorb excess oils, but it doesn't work like a magnet. But it is a very nice clay mask. It does the job that any other clay mask can do. Speaking of quarterly, that spray that everybody absolutely loved, did no one else find it spicy? Like it stung my face and like when I was spraying up my face and sniffed up, it stung my nose. I don't know if it's minty, I don't know if there's menthol in it, but whenever a toner or a mist or anything gives me like a cooling sensation on the skin, that for me is usually a sign that there's an irritating ingredient in it. I really like a lot of their other products though. Their serums are pretty good. That green Youth to the People cleanser and was like viral over lockdown. That dried out my oily skin so bad. It takes a lot to dry out my skin and strip it of its natural oils, especially my T-zone, which is usually an oily mess. It honestly felt like a cleanser from the early 2000s that I would use as a preteen when we're all using Clean and Clear and St. Ives to rip our skin off. And that's really the only opinion I see of it now. I don't see people who still genuinely love this cleanser. It's a bit much. It's just somehow very, very stripping. You know what also gets to me? Any product that comes in a mousse form, especially that mousse sunscreen. I've tried it. I've tried a mousse sunscreen. I've tried a mousse cleanser. You get this big ball of mousse, you put it on your face and then you have to rub it in. It adds like an extra, I don't know, like minute to your routine. <laughs> it's really not that long, but I just think it's annoying. Like why make something unnecessarily hard? 
I don't know if I'm just impatient, but I do not want to be applying my sunscreen in a mousse form. I want to know exactly how much I'm using and just rub that shit into my skin without it being like aerated. What do you think? Do you have any products that like, you don't understand why people love it so much? More skincare products I'm convinced people are pretending they like. The Road Cleanser. I was actually genuinely really looking forward to using the Road Cleanser because I feel like I've given their other products a bit of a hard time recently. I thought I'd buy it anyway because Road other skincare products are nice and I used it solidly for a week ignoring the fact that it was so drying on my skin and after my week's little trial was up I was breaking out bad I was like getting little white heads my skin was itchy from where it was just too drying for me and that's coming from somebody with a very oily t-zone it dried it down really really bad like the youth to the people cleanser I spoke about last time it's got that odd silky foam to it which for me just it all feels like a little bit outdated like I would have used this alongside my oxy pads when I was like 14. Nature spells pure glycerin. <laughs> I'm laughing because this product is shit. It's so bad. I've only really been fully active on TikTok in like the last month. But when I did first join, all I saw was this nature spell product on TikTok shop. And all these content creators, I think they're called e-commerce content creators now, saying how much this glycerin did for their skin. And they were saying things that glycerin scientifically doesn't do for your skin. I did actually buy this product for a YouTube video. It's horrible. It's, it's horrible. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be really sticky, so when I first used it, it was surprisingly light. Put it on my skin, disappeared, disappeared. The only reason I'm gonna be using glycerin like that is to hydrate my skin felt nothing. Do you know what? It felt like it didn't even penetrate the skin. It felt like it just like evaporated off my face. My skin felt tight. It felt dry somehow. Like the product dried down on my skin. I have a real love-hate relationship with this one. This is the Laneige Sleeping Mask. Now, hang on though. I think I figured something out with these. This is the Gummy Bear one and I love it. I use it every single night and it's really, really great for my lips. The strawberry one, on the other hand, the biggest of shit I've ever used. I don't know what it is, but it dries my lips more than any Thing. I wake up and my lips are like non-existent, dry, crusty. So I wonder if it's something to do with the flavoring or the coloring in it that makes it not as good. Let me know if I'm being petty or if you agree with any of these. Also, what products were just not that great for you? So this is Shiseido's Patting Sponge, and it's meant to help absorb essences and serums and toners um, better, I guess. So you get a wet sponge, and then you squeeze it so it's still a little bit damp and still a little bit puffy. And then you're meant to put your toner on the sponge, and then you just do really quick little pats like this. Not the way I was doing it, you're just meant to quickly pat it into the skin. I don't know if it makes a difference, to be honest with you. It's been like a week, but I don't see why it would. <laughs> the skin definitely looks a lot dewier after applying toner and essence is like this. Is it something I'm gonna keep doing? No, because I don't think I have the time to. Whether it does anything or not, I don't know. But you know what? When I have a bit of extra time in the evening, this makes me feel like I'm just giving myself a bit of a, an extra little pamper. And honestly, it feels quite nice as well. If you have ever considered buying skincare or makeup on the TikTok shop, this is literally your sign. Not TikTok shop is literally just Timu and you cannot convince me otherwise. Look at this. This is a YouTube video I did on fake products from Timu. We have Glow Recipe, Dupes, Paula's Choice, COSRX, The Ordinary, what's this? Laneige, um, Isentry, Thayer's, Tokobo, all from Timu with different names pretending to be these brands. And then look what we have on TikTok shop, the same products, some new ones even, all pretending to be Glow Recipe products. Pretty sure that's fake drunk elephant there. Whatever this is, you know, it's not even trying to be a fake product, it's just copying the packaging. So I don't think they're fake, they're not gonna like burn your skin off, but I also don't think they're gonna be good. No, I actually know they're not gonna be any good because I've tried them all. In this video, they all smell either like melted plastic or like your grandmother's perfume from the early 90s. Some of the products you can't tell if they're like, if TikTok shop is an official retailer. This one I'm unsure of. I don't ever remember COSRX doing this kind of floral marketing. If it is COSRX, it's ugly. I'm sorry. It's not the best, <laughs> the best pictures they've ever done. But no, see, this makes me think it, it's fake. 
Of course, they could be real products just from an unofficial retailer. And these aren't fake products. They're just people using the same packaging, trying to lure you into buying these products. This video isn't meant to say whether these products are bad or not. I'm just trying to reinforce the fact that TikTok shop is Timu. I don't know about you, but all these like videos I'm getting of people being like, oh my God, buy these 100 pens for a pound. These eco-friendly dog towels, this pencil that never needs sharpening, all this shit is on Timu and it's all on TikTok shop. It is the same thing, unless you know TikTok shop is the official retailer of whatever brand you're buying from or one of the official retailers. Do not, do not buy products from TikTok shop because you just don't know what you- Skincare products that are nearly perfect, but need a little tweak. Actually, one of my favorite products over the last couple of years is the Rode Peptide Lip Treatments. They're moisturizing, they're nourishing, and the lip tints are so good that pretty much every skincare company have copied them and launched the exact same shades. But one big reason I've started reaching for other lip balms now is that they just dry down and dry out so quickly. I find myself having to reapply every hour or so. With other lip balms, I apply maybe three times a day. I don't know what it is with like the newest batches as well, but they all seem to get gristly after a while. And I also feel like they run out very, very quickly as well. A lot of the tube is just air. I feel like as a brand, they focus so much on marketing that they just need to put a little bit more effort into the formulation. Biodermas, Sensible Defense Serum. They You've got some redness, some itching, some discomfort that you'd really like to soothe. This is an amazing serum to go for. Unfortunately, the packaging is shit. I'm sorry, it's shit, it's really bad. It comes in a very generous sized bottle with a huge, thick pipette. And on the top of the bottle, there's a scraper that takes off any excess serum off the pipette to kind of keep things tidy and make sure you aren't losing excess serum. But in my experience, it doesn't work very well. That mess-free top somehow becomes very, very messy. You get loads of product like drying out over the top of it. And you somehow lose a lot of product despite that being the exact opposite aim of what the packaging is supposed to do. You know, a bit of a waste of product and a bit of a shame. I don't like this. What is this? I'm a fan of fragrance, but this has too much in it. It's overpowering. Speaking of fragrance, this is the Anua Peach 70 Niacin Serum. An amazing, very nice niacinamide serum. That unfortunately is just a little bit too fragrance for me. I'm a fan of fragrance. Not every skin dislikes fragrance, but I do think there is a time and a place and maybe even particular products that it doesn't quite belong in. The niacinamide serum is actually one of those products that I don't really think fragrance belongs in, especially when they make the fragrance very unique in the sense that if this was a perfume, I wouldn't touch this stuff. This is not my favorite fragrance. So in a really nice, effective, nice in my serum, to have a very unique, quite niche fragrance smell that not everyone's gonna enjoy, it's a bit of a gamble, but I can look past that because it, it works so well. But let me know if there's any products that you do really enjoy using or even love, but there's just something about it. If they tweak one thing, it would make it perfect. I have tried so hard to love this brand, but I just can't. And I've really tried. I want to love this brand. These two products are from Harry Styles brand, Pleasing. This is one of the new fragrances. This one is called Closeness. And honestly sounded right up my street as far as notes go. Salted musk, cashmere, cardamom, all scents that I love. <laughs> However, if you are a dog owner or a dog groomer, and you're familiar with the fragrance Princess, for dogs, this is princess for humans. If you have never smelt that dog fragrance, you will probably love this if you are into floral fragrances. However, I can't get over the fact that I will smell like my dog. That's not gonna stop me from trying some of the other fragrances though because everything feels like such good quality with this brand. So I thought I'd try the Pleasing X Marco Ribeiro Gloss Medium. This is supposed to be a gloss that you can mix with pigments, you can mix with foundations, or you can apply it to your skin on its own in order to have like a really glowy, dewy complexion. This feels like glycerin pure glycerin. It's too much, it's too much. It says that gives you a shiny, sheer, radiant finish. It doesn't. Not only do you look oily, 
but you look sticky. You look, you look just sticky. As something to simply apply directly onto the skin to add a gloss, it's not good. Maybe as a makeup artist, you might find a use for this. I love Harry Styles. I love his whole aesthetic. I want to be part of that pleasing world. It entices me. I'm gonna buy more fragrances. I wanna try more of the skincare. I wanna give this more of a go because I don't know. I feel like if they're gonna do something good, it's gonna be really good. Apply your skincare however the fuck you want, right? But one thing I've been seeing which really confuses me, and it's no hate to anyone, like uh, just use your skincare however you want. But I've seen people applying toner like this. Which is fine, like, it's gonna get on your face, right? And I feel like people do it because it's so liquidy and so annoying to use, but the best way to apply all products, really, especially if they're really liquidy and they're just gonna run down your arms, and I think I learned this from Caroline Hirons. I can't remember where I learned this from, but palm of your hand, lay your other hand on top, flip like this, flip like that, like that, and then pat over your face. You lose less product, you get an even spread, you don't have to apply for ages with your fingertips. Skincare mistakes you're probably making in your skincare routine that I don't actually think are that bad at all. Brushing your teeth after your skincare routine. We all know that toothpaste can be really irritating when it goes on your skin. And of course, the best thing to do is wash it away. However, I don't know about you, but when I brush my teeth, it's not going, it's not dripping everywhere. It's not dripping all down my chin. It's actually quite a not messy process. You know, I'm kind of like, over the sink and it's like coming out more than anything. You know, unless you do have some type of skin condition around your mouth, then I don't really think this is such a big deal. Breaking out from a dirty phone. This is a thing, right? Your phone gets loads of bacteria on it every single day. But here, here's my here's my thinking. And this might just be a me thing, but I don't remember the last time I made a phone call. I don't remember the last time somebody called me, but that wasn't a FaceTime, that wasn't a loudspeaker when I didn't have my headphones in. And even when I am on the phone, is it just me? But we're not, we're not doing this. Hello? My phone just doesn't touch my skin, ever, ever. Phones are gross, you know, there's, there's more skincare mistakes you could be making in your skincare routine that I actually don't think are that big a deal. Washing your face in the shower, and I get it, because the people I used to live with back in my London days had the hottest showers. They would walk out physically red. One of my old housemates had such a hot shower, she came out crawling, but she loved it. And the reason a lot of people say not to wash your face in the shower is because really hot water that most people shower with is bad for your skin. I do feel like I'm one of the only people I know who likes kind of like lukewarm showers, more on the luke. But if you can learn to have a bit of a cooler shower, this is definitely not a do not do. Using the wrong finger to pat in eye cream. So everyone's like, you've got to use this one, right? Is it this one? Because it's the most delicate. You want to rub your eye cream in. This middle finger doing that isn't going to do anything bad compared to that. But there's also the idea of rubbing under your eyes can irritate the skin under your eyes, can cause post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. You have got to be rubbing rubbing at your eyes. People can be chronic eye rubbers. This is usually due to allergies, seasonal allergies, eye irritations, things like that. And you, you will see people with pigmentation, inflammation under the eyes. But honestly, if you've got a nice eye cream on and you're just gently wiping, not tugging, and you're just gliding, that there's nothing wrong here. You're gonna be fine. Nothing's gonna happen. <laughs> This is what everyone gets wrong about glass skin. This is a trend that predates TikTok, and the term glass skin is not actually a Korean term. I believe the term actually used in Korea is something more along the lines of see-through skin, because it's meant to describe skin that is luminous, dewy, and at its optimal health. A lot of people think it's just looking shiny as fuck under a ring light, or purely about being well hydrated. I think that's why the seven toner or seven skin method has gone slightly viral again. Glass skin is a combination of evening out skin tone, hydrating your skin, refining texture, refining tone, having well-balanced skin in all aspects. And popular ingredients really contain gentle exfoliants like PHAs, betaine salicate, of course sunscreens, and ingredients you'll see in essences like galactomyces ferment filtrate is one of the more popular. So it really encompasses a whole load of things and not just looking like you rubbed a load of Vaseline on your skin. These are the things I get asked about most when I do a skincare routine video. They're just Velcro patches. They're Velcro patches but I use them just to keep my hair out of my head. Obviously when I do my skincare routine, when I have a mask on, when I'm cleansing, because I don't like my hair falling down, a product going from my hair onto my skin. They don't mess up your hair, they don't add kinks in your hair, and they do hold back thick hair. If these short ones don't hold back your hair, you can just go out and buy a roll of Velcro, and then literally just put it over like that and cut it to size. It's literally what I like to call the penis side. 
of Velcro, like the, the little bits that come out. They're dirt cheap on like Yes Style, you could probably find them on TikTok shop, or just go and buy a load of penis Velcro. I didn't think this was something people still do, but according to the comments on some videos, they, they do. Your toner is not a cleansing stage. After explaining how I apply toner, I had some comments saying that people like to use a cotton pad still because it takes anything off their skin that their cleanser miss. If you are using a cotton pad to apply your toner, which is fine, it should become off completely clear. If there's makeup on it, if you still see sunscreen, then you haven't cleansed thoroughly enough. You don't have to use an oil cleanser, but I do find the less rigorous, easiest way to take off makeup and sunscreen is with an oil cleanser and then a second cleanser of your choice. Toners are purely used to hydrate the skin and in some cases give your skin some active ingredients. <laughs> Starting with the super popular Tambourines. They're like a sister brand to the eyewear brand Gentle Monster. And both brands are really more about artistry. They describe themselves as a team of artists whose art just happens to be cosmetics. Hanyul are an amazing brand that are very good at merging science and natural ingredients. If you're really into that whole glass skin thing, all their products check off every point on the checklist of how to achieve glass skin, hydration, evening out skin tone, soothing, calming, firming, all in a very, very gentle way. They're also kind of a K-beauty staple, kind of like skin food. They've been around for years and one of the only K-beauty brands that do refills in a good way, kind of in the same way Japanese skincare does it. If you're looking to firm up your skin a little bit, the Powerful Bean Firming Serum does that very well. It's a peptide serum, basically. Dr. G is a brand that has some really, really popular and best-selling and award-winning products in Korea. This is a dermatologist founded brand that really, really does focus mainly on the science of skincare ingredients. With a kind of traditional Korean medicine approach, again, all backed by science. This is one of my favorite toners from them. It's like a barrier repairing toner that you could use as like a toner and serum, but it's super watery as well. I love this product. Beyond do some of the best hydrating products that I found in K-Beauty, all their products are soothing, hydrating, really easily slip into your skincare routine and if you want hydration without the stickiness that a lot of um, hydrating products can give you, Beyond is a brand to check out. As a newly licensed nail tech and somebody who does my own nails at home, hand care is important for me. So I look to hand care brands like If Care and iZemi for hand care. They are all gel nail brands and they all basically offer a range of serums and hand creams that you can use on your hands that really focus on replenishing hydration and moisture. Of course, you can use any old skincare on your hands, but these focus on sinking in quickly and not being sticky so you're not left like rubbing your hands for ages after use. So those are some of my favorite, but let me know if you want to see any more. I recently emptied all these products, but did I actually like them? Bioderma Sensibo Defense Serum is such a nice hydrating, calm, soothing serum that I did pretty much use it all up. The annoying thing is the pipette doesn't quite seem to be able to get all that bit in the bottom. Very nice, boring in a good way. Do you know what I mean? Like it just does what it needs to do. My issue is the packaging, which at first you think is really good. 
but it's got like this little bit in the top that kind of glides on the pipette and takes off all the product. But that's also part of the issue. Product starts to leak out, it just gets a little bit messy. I would buy this again if it was in a pump. I have other serums very similar that are in a pump that I prefer because it's in a pump. Naturium's Niacinamide Cleansing Gilet 3% with Niacinamide 3% and Hyaluronic Acid and Vitamin C. Love this. This is the fourth one I've emptied. A really nice deep cleanse without being stripping. You can leave it on your skin like a little mask without it drying out and then rinse it away. I have one of these cleansers in the shower, one by the sink, like I use this all the time, religiously, I love it. Road Glazing Milk. I, at first, really, really loved this. I love all Rode's lip products, but I do find their actual skincare is fine. This is a milky toner, which if you love K-Beauty, would have used a thousand milky toners before. And that's kind of where I struggled with this, is this is like a little bit thicker than all the nice milky toners we're used to with K-Beauty. Laneige, Honey Molly, now Tia Tia have that amazing milky toner. This was just a little bit too heavy. If you're oily or if you like to layer up your products, this is maybe a bit too much in a multi-step routine. I actually finished this up on my body and my body drunk it up like it loved this. Glow Recipes Watermelon PHA plus BHA Pore Tight Toner. Another toner I use pretty much day in, day out. As somebody with rosacea, it's super important for me to um, be gentle with exfoliants and actives. And with PHA and Betaine Salicate as their BHA, this is a super gentle exfoliation. With that kind of K-Beauty twist on exfoliation, which is added hydration. A lot of people comment on the fragrance in here, but that smell you're smelling is actually probably cucumber and not fake watermelon, which a lot of people think it is. Obviously still avoid if your skin doesn't act well to fragrance, but as somebody with rosacea, my skin does not mind this product at all. It loves it. Rare Beauty's Fine Comfort Hydrating Body Lotion. I initially didn't think I was going to use this up because the packaging is hard to squeeze. But I can look past that because of the sustainability of this packaging and also how amazing the product is. I describe this scent, I'm terrible at describing fragrances, I describe the scent as natural, nice smelling skin smell. You get out the shower, apply it to your skin, and it just smells like you smell naturally nice. The scent isn't suffocating, it's not overwhelming. And when applied to damp skin out of the shower, this is moisturizing enough without leaving a greasy, sticky film. A real favorite of mine, this is the Undefined Beauty r, &R Sun Serum, a broad spectrum SPF 50 mineral sunscreen. This has a slight tint to it, which now comes in um, a few different shades. This doesn't sting my eyes. My rosacea is not affected by it whatsoever. However, and whenever I wear this, people ask me if I'm wearing makeup because it does kind of have that like um, BB kind of coverage, not full coverage in any way whatsoever, but it does give a nice natural you cannot love Korean skincare and not give Japanese skincare a try. I'm going to introduce you to two of my favorites. This is the Hatamugi Skin Conditioner. I've used this on and off for like the last five years, and it's essentially a deeply hydrating toner with glycerin to really hydrate and honey extract, moisturizing, soothing, licorice, which is anti inflammatory and can really help even out skin tone. If you're looking for a daily dose of hydration without product feeling heavy on your skin, this is the one to go for. They do a moisturizer. This is new to me though, the skin conditioning gel, which I think is literally just the moisturizer version of that, so. I hate cleansing oils, I don't like them, but the Softy Mo Speeding Cleansing Oil is one of my favorite cleansers of all time. This is the Pokemon version, this is what it usually looks like. This feels like a slightly thicker water that effortlessly, effortlessly removes sunscreen, makeup, with like the gentlest of massages, emulsify with a bit of warm water, rinse away, and it leaves no residue. Japanese Beauty reminds me of K-Beauty, but with a French pharmacy kind of twist. So definitely give them a go, in particular this one, and let me- Don't rinse off your micellar water. A phrase I didn't think would be so, I guess, controversial when I first posted this video explaining that you do not have to rinse off your micellar water. This was kind of the main response I got, and here's one of the main issues. People presume that micellar water is purely for cleansing off makeup, which of course you can use micellar water to cleanse off your makeup. It will work just fine. I personally prefer a cleansing balm. I think cleansing off makeup and sunscreen with micellar water it is a lot of effort, there's a lot of faff, you end up using a lot of like cotton pads or whatever, but micellar water wasn't made to be a makeup remover. Of course, if you're gonna use it as a first cleanse, you have to rinse it away, right? That's obvious. The idea of micellar water came from people not being able to use their tap water in countries, areas where the tap water wasn't good enough quality to be splashing on their face. People who don't have easy access to tap water. Also, there are people who, for whatever physical or mental reason, cannot make their way to a 
sink. So they have micellar water and a few cotton pads, whatever, on the side of their bed. And that is their cleanse. And it is okay to leave that on your skin. Yes, there are no benefits to leaving micellar water on your skin. Of course there isn't. But the benefit of micellar water is that you don't have to rinse it away. That is the benefit. So yes, of course, if you are double cleansing with micellar water, rinse it away, obviously. But if you're just using it as a single cleanse, you do not have to rinse it away. I don't want to have this conversation ever again. As a skincare influencer of eight years, here are some skin chemists that circulate every couple of years that I've noticed are quite prevalent on TikTok. Skin types. Skin types aren't really a myth. They're just more of a suggestion than something set in stone. But what people don't take into consideration is environmental factors. My skin completely changes the combination in the winter. There are multiple factors that contribute to your skin type. So yes, skin type is a good place to start, but pay attention to your changing skin. Poor clogging ingredients and comedogenic and non-comedogenic. Just like skin types, poor clogging or comed oh, comedogenic ingredients is a good suggestion is a good starting point but do bear in mind the only real way you're going to find out that something clogs your pores is to try it i've mentioned this before and people have said i'd rather not risk it do consider that the reason you're not risking it is because a bunch of pure raw ingredients was tested in a rabbit's ear and it happened to break out it's got nothing to do with the human skin the highly inaccurate comedogenic rating was born and then a few years later they retested these ingredients on a human's back with different results. These tests do not take into consideration how one, ingredients are actually used and two, how they're actually formulated into a skincare product. This is mouthwash and a toothbrush for your face. This is Laundry U's Clean Face Gargle Strong Gel to Foam Cleanser. And I've been waiting till I was having a super oily day to try this one. This cleanser claims to have a clinically proven 99.9% .9 antibacterial effect to help prevent breakouts. That's just as refreshing as a mouthwash. And if by refreshing, they mean staying in the shit out of your eyes then yeah it was refreshing the toothbrush is nice and fluffy when used against the skin and the soft gentle scrub i do feel over the space of a week helped with the sebaceous filaments on my nose it's not drying at all surprisingly and it doesn't irritate my rosacea the menthol is a little 90s and unnecessary but it's a pretty good basic cleanser I think especially for those who have very oily skin. Skincare rules I refuse to follow. Not washing your face in the morning. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, great advice. But there are certain times where I, as an oily skinned person, need to wash my face in the morning. If I have been using a heavy overnight mask, if I have been slugging, as somebody with oily skin, I want to wipe that all away. Especially when it comes to the summer and I've been sweating, my face is oily and greasy. Not washing my face in the morning feels disgusting. Obviously, that's not the rule for everyone. Do whatever your skin likes. Sleeping on my back. I know this is meant to be one of the main things, along with retinol and sunscreen, that stops you getting fine lines and premature wrinkles and all that stuff. I can't fucking do it. I've tried. I cannot do it for the life of me. First reason, I get nightmares when I sleep on my back and I don't know why. But also, I can't go through the process of training myself to do that. As a side sleeper, I find it really hard. And I feel like lack of sleep is a bigger issue for my skin than teaching myself how to sleep on my back. Skincare rules I refuse to follow. The correct way to layer skincare products. Now using your products lightest to thickest is very good general advice, but none of these really have any kind of scientific backing. Of course, you wanna apply your sunscreen last, you wanna cleanse first, but most steps in the in-between are interchangeable. So if you've applied your serums and you forgot to apply your toner, either don't use your toner or just apply your toner after, it's not gonna be the end of the world. There is no magic number of seconds that you should be cleansing your skin. Cleansing isn't about the amount of time you spend doing it, but more about being thorough and covering all areas of your skin. I think the idea is that if you spend 60 seconds cleansing your skin, you get all the areas you usually forget. But if you could do that in 30 seconds, then do that in 30 seconds. If you have actives in your cleanser that you'd like to make the most of, then leave it on your face for like a couple of minutes. But if you just want to cleanse, you don't have to do it for 60 seconds. Avoiding layering certain actives. I think there's this idea that if you mix certain active ingredients together, they cancel each other out or they're going to blow up on your face and make your face fall off. There are some gray areas when it comes to this, but the majority of the time, your actives will work perfectly fine together. It's more about what your skin can handle which I think is a good point and the main point that maybe you want to use retinol and a BHA, which you can do if your skin can handle it. You could exfoliate every day if you wanted to, if your skin is used to it. Should you be doing that every day? Does your skin benefit from exfoliating every day versus just three times a week? 
I don't personally think so, but don't be scared to mix certain actives if it's easier just to slot them into your routine. Just know what your skin can handle. We need to talk about these, because everyone keeps asking me what these are. This is Experiment's Avant-Garde Reusable Sheet Mask. It's made of 100% non-porous, stretchy silicone, and basically puts a protective, inclusive layer over your favourite serum, trapping in all that hydration and moisture like a sheet mask. This isn't sponsored, by the way, but what I prefer about these is, let me show you, I'll put on this glycerin serum. This is the Super Saturated from Experiment. When I use this mask, I don't rub in my serum all the way. And then with the stretchy ear hole bits, you put this over and then just put it on like this. Now a lot of my comments said you can just get these in Daiso for cheap. They are nothing like the ones you get on Daiso. Few differences. The comfortable stretchy ear. So it's got this 3D kind of fit to it. The nose comes out instead of pushing it down. It fits under the chin as well so it fits better around the jawline. It's also made of a silicone that kind of feels like it sticks to the skin so you get that better kind of occlusion. And then when you take it off you're left glowy, dewy and plump. They come in two sizes for a small head and a bigger head and it costs nineteen dollars and you can use it for the rest of your life. Again, not sponsored, I just think it's like genius. This is the simplest yet most effective skincare tip that I've done most of my life that really did change my skin. And that is what I call multi-moisturizing. It really is just using different moisturizers in different areas. So for example, I have a very oily T-zone. So I take a moisturizer like the Ceramide um, Atto Soothing Gel from Iliune, which is nice and lightweight. And I'll apply that strictly to my oily T-zone. This way my oily skin doesn't feel bogged down. I don't get breakouts in my T-zone. I don't get greasy and oily because I've had to use something heavier. Then I will go in with a heavier cream on my dry skin, which is my cheeks. So I'm using, what's this? The Tear Tear Ceramic Cream. No opinion on this yet, just trying it, but so far so good. This way my really dry cheeks are cared for. They're not craving moisture and hydration where I've used something that's too light on them. And as someone with rosacea, for me it is important to really cater for my rosacea prone cheeks. And I count the under eyes as a moisturizing step, that being an eye cream. The delicate skin under your eyes is different to the rest of your face. So in my opinion, it is important to use a cream and moisturizer that is specifically made for the thinner skin under your eyes. That was way too high there. These do not have to be expensive, but should contain some ingredients that target that delicate thinner skin under your eyes that you won't necessarily find in your other moisturizers. Focusing on all these different skin types on my one face has really saved me from dryness, breaking out, oiliness, greasiness, sebaceous filaments, blackheads, redness and irritation. Did I say that? I think so. Rosacea flaring up. It takes like 30 seconds longer to do this and is one of the more effective things I've done for my skin. Excuse the shitty lighting, but this question, there really isn't much difference nowadays between a toner and essence and sometimes even a serum. Um, essences used to be mainly an anti-aging product, anti-aging. So it would really focus on fine lines and wrinkles and they'd usually always do that with fermented ingredients. So Galactomyces Ferment Filtrate, probably being the most popular one that you see in like SK2, for example, you know, that kind of like fermented history behind the brand. Um, and that was it, that's all it would be. And then your toner would be your hydration stage. That's when toners moved on from being astringents. Um, the history of the toner is a whole other thing. And then serums would be your treatment stage with the most actives you'll probably find in it throughout your whole skincare routine. But now, once you've cleansed and bef before your moisturizer, that kind of in-between stage of essence toner serum, they've all jumbled up now you find serums that are just thick toners that you know primarily just hydrate you find toners that have as much actives in as a serum would usually have and then essences 
I think still are pretty one of the only products in, in that middle stage that has the kind of that fermented ingredients in, which I still really love, but you may as well just drop the toner and use the essence and then use a serum, a treatment type serum. So to be honest with you, the difference between essence and serums, uh, essence and toners, there's nothing really other than that star ingredient of a, a fermented ingredient. But people have moved on from that now. So yeah, I don't know. There's there's not much difference to be honest at all now. This is the worst fragrance review you're ever gonna watch because I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about when it comes to fragrance. First up is Molecule One by Eccentric Molecules, I think it is. And this sounds like your friend who works in media. Like they do media, like you're not quite sure what, but they always smell clean and busy to the point where you're like, are you wearing a fragrance or is that just how you how your skin smells, you know? I like this, as you can see, as like an everyday, fresh, clean scent. This is The Voice of the Snake by Gucci. And this smells like the dentist, it smells like the waiting room, or it smells like the stationery cupboard you used to volunteer to tidy up as a child in school because you wanted to steal the blue tack. I can't, it's, it just smells like dentists or like the waiting room in a doctor's. I can't see why anybody would want to win, willingly put this on their skin. This is 1969's Purple Haze. This smells like um, your rich vegan friend who like lives in a house where they don't burn incense, but they burn like um, essential oil with a really, a really expensive, uh, Fuser with a hint of money like they've been rolling around in coins. It's got a, a little metallic smell to it But I really really like this one as like an evening scent. This is Penn Halligan's Endymion I think it's pronounced and this smells like your friend's boyfriend who's just had a haircut or like um, a dad Who wears like a nice Harrington jacket and a pair of jeans to an evening meal with the family Who's also just had his haircut. It's very masculine. It's very men's locker room very men's barber very manly men men Let me know if you like the sound of any of them <laughs> and if you want me to review any more. These are skincare brands that I personally think you might be missing out on because here on TikTok, people only review what's already viral. Smood is a brand that focuses on acne prone skin, but with a completely different approach to the usual, very clinical, often drying out type of acne treatments and products that we're used to. They focus more on calming and hydrating along with treatment. A standout product for me is their Problem Solver Gel Cream Moisturizer. This has a long list of what's in it. Hyaluronic Acid, Niacinamide, Retinol, Palmitate, Arbutin, Butin, licorice root, rice ferment filtrate, oat extract, ceramides, a real cocktail of ingredients all skin types can benefit from. Build skincare. This is a brand who say they're guided by science and not gimmicky marketing and advertising and what's viral. They're simple products that kind of go beyond basics and they're more necessities. And it's hard to kind of pick a standout product because they all just work. They all just do the job they're supposed to do and do it really, really well. What I think the TikTok crowd might like is their bee balm. Think a slugging balm, but the lightest weight slugging balm you'll ever use. It creates an amazing barrier to help lock in all that hydration and moisture without making you feel suffocated and greasy. As somebody with rosacea who knows nothing about makeup, the new Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin Enhancing Tint is the perfect skin tint for me. As you can see, I don't know what I'm doing. There's panic on my face. I'm just kind of rubbing this on my skin and then using an old beauty blender I found in a drawer to help pat that in. It is foolproof, me being the fool. I've used a beauty blender, I've used my fingers, and it always gives me that same seamless, natural glow from within finish to my skin. It's not full coverage. I love that little bit of redness still to poke through from my rosacea for a more natural look, but the skin tint just gives me a dewy, glowy, more even toned finish. I absolutely love it. Ranking tinted lip balms, let's go. Soltaire, not used, but I love their skincare, so I'm gonna put them at a kind of like safe eight, I think. I don't know. Road. I used to love Road. I still use them. I think the color payoffs are great. The only issue is recent formulation issues. It means they're getting all like gristly and stuff and getting like lumps in them. And I'm finding I apply them a lot, but I still use them. And they got nice instant gratification. So third, for now, for now, it's getting worse. New six, I don't like at all. I don't like their skincare. It's 10 for me. Uh, I've not used that one either. Looks good though. I know a lot of people who do really, really like them. Summer Fridays. I don't love them as much as all the other ones, as much as everybody else does. It's, they're a little bit too sticky for me, but I'm going to put them at six. Tower 28. I actually love these ones. A really nice natural color payoff. And it's kind of hydrating as well as moisturizing. So I'm going to put them four for now. 
Um, Glossierbalm.com, essentially a nice like flavored colored Vaseline, uh, which I don't hate. I used to use regularly, but not so much anymore, so five. Naturium, this has to be number one for me. Great pigment, really moisturizing, lasts for ages where well. you don't have to constantly reapply Laneige. I think number two, I use the gummy bear flavor a lot, like a lot, a lot. Um, my only issue is they're a little bit sticky, but it has to be number two because I use them all the time, which means, who? I don't know, seven? <laughs> That should have been number 10. I've never heard of that before. But yeah, so many amazing lip balms. Let's be honest, they're all pretty. Double cleansing is the best way to remove makeup and sunscreen, but a lot of people forget that they need to emulsify. Emulsifying is adding warm water to turn the balm into a milky texture. This ensures that all the balm is washed away and no sunscreen makeup or product is left on the skin that could potentially break you out. Using toners as a cleanser or cleansing stage, toners are purely there to help hydrate the skin, plus the benefits of any actives included in the toner. If you're using a cotton pad to wipe toner across your face and makeup or dirt is still showing on the cotton pad, then you've not cleansed properly. As somebody with combination skin, I love multi-masking, but I often see people using two masks together that don't really go together or used in the wrong way. For example, pairing a clay mask with hydrogel patches and then just putting the patches over the top of the clay, which doesn't make sense. It needs to go on bare skin because they are covered in essentially an eye serum that you want to penetrate the skin and be able to pat into the skin after. If you put it over the clay mask, you're just wetting the clay mask. Really. These are some of the more interesting interesting skincare products that I own. This is a deep pore cleansing blackhead stick filled with calming, soothing ingredients and a little silicone brush on top that helps reduce blackheads and sebaceous filaments on your nose. Not massively exciting, but this is Bioderma's micellar water with a pump bottle. Everyone seems to love it when I use it. It's just from Amazon. This is a biphase exfoliating decongestant that focuses on treating blackheads, whiteheads, acne and milia. The biphase technology makes it super gentle even on my rosacea prone skin. This is a 946 milliliter version of one of my favorite hydrating serums with super hydrating glycerin, sodium PCA, and allantoin to help soothe and calm. You've not felt hydration until you've used this. This is a skincare depuffing tool meat serum that uses arnica to help depuff the skin and centella asiatica to help with facial redness, along with niacinamide. This is a tone vitality lip balm targeted at men only. <laughs> it adds a slight touch of redness to the lips to make your lips look bright while it's also soothing and moisturizing your lips. It's very subtle, but I do think it makes a difference. Here are some personal budget favorites of mine. And when I say budget, I mean under 10 pounds. I didn't realize how expensive skincare has gotten. It's crazy. Starting off with a cleanser. This is the Bondi Sands Freshen Up Gel Cleanser. It's very soothing for irritation. It's got aloe vera in, chamomile, and actually works great for a double cleanse as well. For a toner,
Under the Bioma Hydrating Toner is one of my favorites. It's just a nice, simple, hydrating, milky toner. We have polyglutamic acid, which is super hydrating. Centella to help soothe it's got their barrier lipid complex, which of course is great for your skin barrier. When it comes to chemical exfoliants, you can't really go wrong with Pixie's Glow Tonic. A little bit fragrant, so if your skin doesn't like fragrance, give it a skip and go for something from the Inky List. The Inky List Niacin My Serum kind of combines what I consider two very basic active ingredients nowadays, niacinamide and hyaluronic acid, which I feel can fit into everybody's skincare routine because everybody can benefit from both and is usually absolutely fine to use alongside your other treatment serums. I know a lot of people are going to say the ordinary, but Inky List, they have a bit more kind of like complete formulations. Beauty Bay do their own skincare line um, called By Beauty Bay, I think it is. This is their Colonial Oatmeal Moisturizer, which is a little bit of a thicker one, but again, very, very good for soothing and calming skin, especially in the evening routine. And this Elf Pure Skin one as well is a great daytime one. I personally didn't like it, but I know a lot of people absolutely love this one. Then when it comes to sunscreen, you're pretty good with anything French pharmacy, to be honest with you. Anything Korean, but a lot of them I wouldn't consider budget. And I'll be honest, I've not used a sunscreen under 10 pounds that I've actually really liked. So if you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments 